we have made it, guys. <laughs> so, um, I filed all the nails, dusted off and everything, and now I'm going to, um, 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 just um at you for a bit. And now I'm going to apply my artwork. So on my ring finger, because that, um, look at that effect. Oh, it's so beautiful. I just wanted to add just a few crystals. I seem to be getting more and more obsessed with crystals. A set is not complete unless there's a hell of a lot of bling on it now. So yeah, so I'm getting my crystals involved. So here we have um, a mix of the, f I always use Swarovski crystals, first of all. Um, because there is no shine like a Swarovski crystal um, and it's the way they're cut just so beautifully with this high quality glass to create this beautiful crystal. Um, you just can't beat the shine from Swarovski. So I always use Swarovskis. This is a mix of Crystal AB. Um, I have a few pots where I've just mixed various sizes and shapes and colours together. So this is kind of my crystal crystal ab mix so i've got crystal crystal ab and then the the whitey ones are um opal in the tray there i've used um, one of my flat back shapes and i'm just creating a nice little design with these crystals there and i'm currently during my medical leave relaunching the glitter fairy crystal section on the website so hopefully Hopefully by May, that should be ready to uh, uh, be up and running properly. And there are some, oh, I've got some very exciting things coming. So I'm going to use a detailer brush. So I'm using my Crystal Nails Barb 2, but basically any fine line detailer brush. And I'm getting some of my top coat and applying around the crystals. Um, sometimes, depending on the crystals you've done, sometimes I just use the brush like with my top coat applicator or sometimes I use a detailer brush. It, it depends which will be easier. Never go over your crystals because it doesn't matter whether you use crystals, rhinestones or little plastic ones. If you go over with your top coat, what the top coat does is the top coat will cover up the, the cuts and the facets of the crystals and that's what gives the crystals their shine. So if you top coat over Swarovski, you dull that shine. I might add to my list of videos to do an example of basically what you'll do. You basically dull the shine, the light doesn't refract properly and you just end up, they just look like round beads on top of the nails. So always make sure to be very careful not to get your top coat over. Um, and if you've done like a full nail, you can get a nice detail and go in between each crystal and stuff if you really want to secure them in place. But I'll never go over the top. So I've then applied that top coat and cured. I'm now going to apply top coat to all my other nails and cure that. You can see that those lovely crystal and the regular chameleon flakes. They just have such a lovely depth of colour and it's one of those things that is just as you move, they kind of just catch the light and shine. So always take time when you're applying your top coat to make sure that it's nice and smooth and you've got a decent application. You don't want to flood it on there, but you want a nice, decent application. Because now, I'm sorry, my voice keeps getting really croaky. I don't know why. I think it's probably because I don't really speak much at the moment. <laughs> uh, so my voice is, oh, it's all too much doing these voiceovers. So that's all cured. And now I'm going to add some 3D. So I'm using CJP White Diamonds for the 3D and my Glitter Fairy 3D brush. So I picked up a small bead, taking a bit of the liquid out of the back of the bead and placing it on the nail. And I'm using my brush at a 45 degree angle to just shape those petals. So I'm going for the kind of 
lilyish shape. I say kind of an um a lot. <sighs> you know, when you become aware of something. <laughs> so depending on how experienced you are with your 3D, you might want to do one petal at a time. You might want to do two. You might be able to do three at a time. It all depends on how confident you are, how quick you are, and also the temperature of your room, the setting speed of your acrylic. So I tend to work at about two to three petals at a time. Especially when I'm doing a design like this, where I have put 3D on every nail. <laughs> and again, with 3D and decorating and stuff, as you can see with these nails, I was doing, so I did my little fingers, so I did one and then the other, and then one and then the other. The main reason I do that is, <clears throat> I've only been in the industry about five years, um, but in a previous, in a previous life, when I was at a cashier at a bank, I got really bad RSI in one of my hands and it spread all up my arm. So I'm always very aware of um, when my hands start to feel a bit tired and crampy and achy, which I do suffer with at the moment anyway. Uh, when doing clients, my hands can be quite bad. So when I'm doing decorating or filing or anything like that, I'll often alternate so I won't, like, as I said earlier, if I, when I file all of my hands, I'll do a nail on each hand, so I keep alternating, so that your hands don't get too cramped and too stuck in one position. And it's the same when doing things like 3D and decorating. As you can see, I'm using my thumb to kind of hold the end of that nail to keep that finger where I want it. And if I did that across all of the fingers, I just end up with a bit of like a claw crampy hand, so I always make sure I alternate between. And with this design, I'm just wanting to create two, maybe three of these flower designs just flowing down and across the nail. And this kind of 3D is, is a really nice um, it's one of the easier ones to learn because it is very, very simple, kind of like pushing it into a round and then pulling it into a point. And then you can elaborate by adding layers and, and movement in the petals and stuff. But this is quite a good one if you're just learning to do 3D. And you don't have to put the centre petal in, you can just leave it with three little petals I would always then like put crystals or something in the middle but again I have a real problem with crystals <laughs> and again when you're working on your own nails just kind of like, as you can see now I'm like pushing my finger against the um, table move to get yourself comfortable I do this with my clients as well a lot too make sure you so granted when your client is sat in front of you with their hand like straight in front of you you can always turn their hand round and have their nails so they're kind of like pointing up facing so that you can manipulate someone's hands so that they're moving around so you don't always have to turn yourself inside out you can quite simply just move someone's hand a little bit to make it an easier angle for you I hope that makes sense I'm then going to add just a few little crystals so here's my CJP gripper glue a little wax crayon and again these are a collection of crystals I've got so again I've got like a pot of green and some of my plain crystals I do have little crystal wheels that I've created myself and all the different colours are in different colours and different sizes all in perfect order but I find for sets like this and a lot of the time you'll want a colour set so I just pop a load of greens in together or a load of purples and together and stuff like that so you have the different shades different sizes different um, colors and they're easier to get than keep going to different parts of the crystal wheel Yeah, and I just like the extra shine and shimmer that the crystals give. I apologise, when I was filming that, I normally have the flash on my phone on and for some reason it turned itself off for some of the filming. 
back on now. So now I'm going to do exactly the same, but I'm just going to show you with my non-dominant hand. So I tend to nearly always do a pick up with my dominant hand and then pass it over to my non-dominant. Just doing the exact same. Sometimes I find when I'm working with my non-dominant hand, I'll there'll be a little more movement from, sometimes I bring my finger up to the brush rather than put the brush down to the, to the nail, if that makes sense. Because I feel I have more control that way if I just hold the brush still and then I'll move my hand underneath it. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna let this keep playing on. You don't need me rambling over while um, this bit is on. So I'm just gonna add some 3D and decoration to this nail. Okay, and when they're all done, I then added some crystals, and I basically did that on every single nail apart from the one I'd done on the ring finger. So then we're all finished, and all of that acrylic has cured. Just pop a little bit of cuticle oil on, just replenishes the skin around your um, nails. Don't forget, cuticle oil is also essential while you're wearing your nails because it helps keep the acrylic nice and supple, so you've got less chance of cracking and breaking and lifting and things like that. And I'm just going to massage that into the cuticles and underneath. And then we're all done. So I hope you've enjoyed these videos, guys. 
Um, I've really enjoyed sharing them and now can't wait to get my nails back on. So um, yeah, any questions or comments, um, please just pop them below. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.